Hey guys, Kildare here, and this is the series where I take quotes from the masterpiece The Art of War by Sun Tzu and apply said quotes to MOBAs and online games in general to help you guys understand the philosophy and strategy behind the warfare. Let's begin. Our first quote of the day is from Chapter 5, Quote 2, which reads, Fighting with a large army under your command is no wise different from fighting with a small one. It is merely a question of instituting signs and signals. Any tactician will tell you that communication is one of the most vital aspects to warfare. At the end of the day, MOBAs are a team game, and it is true that we cannot always pick our allies, and sometimes it's easier to blame your allies for the defeat that you have just suffered. Even if you have done everything in your ability to excel your own performance and still lose, is it still okay to blame your allies? Well, it all depends, but for this scenario, the answer is no. You may have done everything you possibly could have to make your hero or champion better, but if you do not communicate with your allies, then it's all pretty much for nothing. Being a one-man army is pretty pointless and difficult. Working as a team will always surpass. It is true that you have to put more effort into communicating and articulating what you are trying to convey. However, the end result will drastically increase your chances of winning. This comes back to the core fundamentals of warfare, which I mentioned a few episodes back. Number 3. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all of its ranks. Sometimes we can be in a game and we know exactly what we are going to do, how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it, and we have a strategy down pat that we have used in the past that has worked before. So we will go about our strategy, but you notice your allies are not tagging along. They all seem to be doing their own things, like rushing a lane or getting camps, etc, etc. Now you may come to the conclusion that your allies are stupid and the game is over because of them. However, the truth of the matter is, is that all four of your allies have their own strategies and plans that they are trying to pursue. Since you have not articulated your strategy to them, then they are probably thinking the same of you in the same way that you're thinking of them. So how do we avoid this little bump on the road? Well, simply communicate. Tell them what your plan is, what build you are thinking of going for, what lane you will be attending, which hero or champion you want to be by your side, and what target to focus. Telling your team what your plan is, or how you go about playing your hero, can help you all think united rather than five different strategies that don't work together. Here's an example. In my opinion, Asmodon is horrible for team fights. He has low health, no escape, and very susceptible to CC, but he excels at AoE. So naturally when I play as him, I push lanes hard for siege damage. The difference between victory and defeat is if you tell your allies your plan. Asmodon can handle himself pretty well 1v1. His E can out damage most heroes and he will normally win. Bring in another factor and he is screwed. Now bring in four factors and he is useless. Say if I go about my strategy without telling my team, there's a pretty good chance that they will lose team fights and rage on Asmodon fast. Why is this? Because they don't know how to play Asmodon as a hero, and they don't know what the player of the Asmodon is doing or what he is thinking. When a team fight breaks out or an objective spawns, the expectation is for everyone to show up. Thus, when someone does not, they feel that there is no excuse for said person not to show up. However, this entire situation can be fully avoided if you tell your team. At the start of a game, tell your team your hero is literally useless in team fights, but excels at pushing. Thus, when an objective spawns, instead of dying and losing for said objective, you will push the lane at the that is furthest away from the objective. Telling this to your team can make a huge difference. The team is now knows that it will be a 4v5. Instead of going for kills, they can stall for as long as possible. The enemy team will be put between a rock and a hard place. They need the objective, but the opposing team is stalling for a long time and Asmodon is pushing a lane very hard. They can divert a team member or two to deal with Asmodon, however it has now caused the team fight over the objective to be a 4v4, lowering the chances of them getting it. The best possible outcome for this strategy is that they send the enemy to deal with Asmodon, however it is now too late and he has taken a fort. Meanwhile, the enemy team is getting decimated over the objective and your team gets the objective, a fort, and a level advantage. This opportunity was only given through communication and cooperation. This sort of thing is common among specialist heroes like Zagara and Murky. It does not stop there, however. You should try to always communicate to your team throughout the game 
for the best chances of working as a team and as a unified mind for victory. If you have a target that you want your team to focus during a fight, tell them, say we shall focus this hero and we will probably win. Most people will probably agree with you and switch to the target. The ping system helps you achieve this and is one of the best features introduced into MOBAs. Many people may think that pings are fairly useless and no one really listens to them, however deep down we all pay attention whether it be subconscious or not. You'll probably notice that I ping nearly all of my actions in games, so this helps my team understand me and my actions. Whenever I move to a lane or run out of mana, I always tell my allies. Every ping is useful and allows the team to work together. Pinging retreat when a team fight is about to break out will probably make your team disengage because they now know that because of the ping, an ally is not ready and they will lose this engagement. A support saying out of mana before her thing lets allies know that they won't have heals until that person gets back, so we should all play safe. Pinging mercenary camps to allies tells them that you need help getting them or you think now is an opportune moment to get the mercenaries. Pinging a danger sign at the boss camp tells your allies that you think the enemy team is either taking the boss or is trying to bait your team in for a gank. All this communication is also information sharing. Try to understand that if any of your allies ping something, it's for a reason. You and your allies might not agree all the time. Try not to resort to arguing, just simply come to a compromise and don't start banting at each other. Moving on, we have quote 5 which reads, in fighting, the direct method may be used for joining battles, but indirect methods will be needed in order to secure victory. As well as quote 10, which reads, In battle, there are no more than two methods of attack, direct and indirect, yet these two combinations give rise to endless series of maneuvers. As said by the two quotes above, direct and indirect tactics are needed to win, so just because you are using a direct form attack does not mean that you will spell defeat for your team, as long as someone else is working indirectly. To decipher this more easily, tanks like ETC, Leoric, Muradin are direct fighters. They begin the fight and stay on the front line, protecting the back line and take damage. The point of this is so that the team or an ally can work around the fight and find a way to kill through indirect methods. A good example would be Murden fighting as his good distraction to allow Nova to pick off enemies in the back line. Another good example is the Asmodan one I said before, however I wanted to cover communication first before I mention indirect tactics because should you use said tactics, you need to inform your allies. If you are going to do something unpredictable to kill the enemy, and it really is unpredictable, there is a pretty good chance that not only will the enemy team not know what's coming, your allies don't know either. So if you do it and it backfires, and you did not tell your team, rather than looking like a tactical mastermind, you look like a moron. Specialists will normally work in indirect ways, whether it be pushing a lane while people are fighting over objectives, to getting camps at crucial moments, to just unique mechanics that enemies don't know how to deal with. Assassins like Nova and Zeratul also excel at this, as well as tanks like Artanis and Rexar. There are many tactics you could use to dominate your enemy, going through all of them would take an uncanny amount of time. The important thing is that if you are going to do something out of the ordinary, tell your allies. Always share information with your team, whether it be tactics, pings, MIAs, which is more important for League of Legends, etc etc. You will probably notice that pre-made groups tend to work better together, and can normally completely annihilate a team that has no communication. Not only do pre-made members know each other and how they play, but it is likely that they have some sort of vocal communication software like TeamSpeak, Skype, or Ventrilo. The addition to vocal communication allows allies to share more information more quickly and easier, making the team work in an astonishing synergy. Every now and then, I'm sure we've all been in those games where the enemy pre-made or your own pre-made completely decimates the team. No matter where you are or your team, they are always one step ahead. They all destroy the focused target in an instant and they know where your team is at all times and take advantage of it, or vice versa. And most importantly, the pre-made makes little to no mistakes. You think you have an advantage over them, but they all group up and come back out of nowhere. This synergy they have, the ability for all five members to work together like a united mind is due to them communicating. 
it does take more energy to be engaged with the team and it is more effort but if you really want the victory that badly then it should be nothing for you even if you lose getting along with your allies and talking and laughing will always be a better substitute than blaming your allies for not communicating we all have the energy willpower and effort to be engaged with the other four strangers that we are paired up with it's up to us how we disperse our energy and how much of that energy we are willing to put into a game teamwork victory and enjoyment with that said i will leave you with one final quote quote 15 which reads energy may be likened to the bending of a crossbow decision to release the trigger well guys thanks for watching like this video if it helped you leave a comment if you like let me know your thoughts and if you really like the sound of my voice then you'd be ecstatic about subscribing to my channels where i just go on and on about anything and everything Go on, give it a shot. Have a good one.